Now for this next part, we've got to find the speed of the ball as it passes through A. And in the previous part, we found out that the time that it passed through A from the point of projection was 9 divided by 4.9, which gave us this answer, 1.8347 and so on. Now we've got to then find out the speed as it passes through A. So to do this, what we've got to think of is the components of the velocity at A. As the ball's passing down through A, it's going to be moving in a direction, something like this, which is a tangent to the curve. So this would be the velocity, okay? I'll mark it in as a vector there, V. Now, it's going to be made up of two components. One component will be in this horizontal sense and the other one will be in the downward sense. So let's say that this is V1 and this one down here is V2. But how am I going to get V1 and V2? Because once I've got them, I can use Pythagoras' theorem then to get V. Well, V1 we know because it's always moving at a constant speed horizontally because the acceleration is always perpendicular to the horizontal direction of motion. So there's no acceleration, so it moves at a constant speed of 6 meters per second. So that's going to equal 6. But for V2, that's going to change because we've got the acceleration here. Now we can get V2 by considering the vertical motion. Let's just come down here. If we consider the vertical motion, just put the subtitle up there, then building up our equation S, U, V, A and T, taking upwards as positive, then what have we got? Well, we know S was H, but we can avoid this coming into this equation. We know U, let's keep it easy. We know U is the initial vertical velocity, which is plus 12. V is what we're trying to find, which is V2 here. A acts downwards, so it's against our positive sense, so it'd be minus G, minus 9.8. And t, well t is this decimal, or you could use the exact value, 9 over 4.9. So what equation could we use then to get v2? Well, it's going to be v equals u plus at. So using v equals u plus at, we just need to substitute our values in. So what have we got? We've got, therefore, v is v2 and it equals u, which is 12, plus a, which is minus 9.8, times t, t being 9 over 4.9. And this works out really nicely if you use this exact value, because 4.9 cancels into the 9.8 twice. So you've got 12 minus 2 nines, 12 minus 18, which leaves you with minus 6. Minus 6 meters per second then. And this is what we would expect, a negative value, because it's on the way down. OK, so we've now got that V2 is 6 downwards. We could finish this off now by just drawing a triangle. We've got V through here. Okay, and we've got its components. We've got, let's just put them on in dotted lines. One that way, one that way. Okay, so we have got six meters per second in that direction and six meters per second in that direction. So to get V, the magnitude of V, represented by the length of that line, just simply use Pythagoras in this right angle triangle. So the magnitude of V, the speed in other words, is going to be equal to the square roots then of the sum of the squares of the components, 6 squared plus 6 squared. 
the root of 72. And if you do the root of 72, you end up with 8.4852 and so on, which when rounded, say, to three signal figures, is going to be 8.49. 8.49 meters per second to three signal figures, 3SF. Okay?